what's happening people? Welcome back to the vlog. So, we got a busy day today, we got some shit to go through, we got some training to do, and we got some things to talk about, so let's just get fucking up, yeah. Hey, doing a wee sprint workout today. I'm um, gonna go through a wee bit of a warm up and then get into this here. And I'm um, doing this outside just in front of the house, so you don't really need a lot of space for some of these workouts. So um, if you're stuck for space in it, it's probably a good one to do. Um, I might do a wee mile run after this as well, but um, yeah, we'll see how we fit. This wee drill is called booms, I like it. Because you start to develop a wee bit of stiffness whenever you're driving your leg down hard you want to kind of think about your legs being nice and stiff because if you think if I'm spinning and my leg just like drop or squat down I'm not going to really produce much power so it's a nice one for developing some stiffness This us on the A skip with the switch Nice for getting that wee bit of stiffness again but also nice for just developing a wee bit more rhythm So now into some straight leg bounds. Um, going for two sets of 30 meters, but like each 10 meters, you're going to increase your stride length basically. So like you're gradually getting longer strides as you go on on it. Some stuff when your foot hits the ground, it's nice and solid. Last thing we do is your foot to be crumbling. You need to be crumbling. You want everything nice and stiff for good heart contractions. So next up we got some uh, wickets and wickets are basically just like mini hurdles and you set them up at a particular distance and you're kind of working for your stride length in it. Um, this one's again more like kind of mechanics, more like rhythm, it's not really so much a speed drill, it's more um, like a technique drill. Um, you can't really see it too well but I have a little bone set up where I'm trying to step in. Not the best angle here but the best a man can do. So the final set of sprints we're doing is flying sprints um, and these are probably the most demanding of the ones you do because this is where you're hoping to hit kind of maximum velocity so you don't want to do too many of these and you only give yourself plenty of rest what I have I've set out a 30 meter uh, I've set out 30 meters here 20 meters in I've put a cone and um, then you have obviously 10 meters at the end so basically the idea is that you accelerate to like max speed at 20 meters and then you're holding that uh, final 10 meters or you're trying to make sure you're at top end speed basically for 10 meters I don't know if that made sense or if I just completely butchered that but you see that cone there and then another one that's the speed zone that's where magic happens How fast did I look? I felt fast I felt real fast to rest at least kind of two or three minutes you'll want to like go and just do it straight away but you'll not be fresh, you'll not be able to sprint at the same speed, so there you actually not sprint, so rest. Those sprint workouts are tough, but they're not tough in the same way like, uh, you know, if you're on miles or something, so it's um, it's probably important to understand, that, like, don't worry if you're coming off that and thinking, geez, I'm not, I'm not too tired, like, that's fine. Um, you're looking for quality in them things, so really important to do that there, but just remember, don't think that you have to break yourself when you're doing it. Yeah, got a bit of uni work to do here, and then a few other jobs to do today. Do you ever find whenever you run in the morning, it, like, feels significantly harder than the afternoon or evening? I kind of notice that whenever I go to do a run in the morning, I don't know if it's maybe because you're not as well warmed up, or... Like it feels harder in your chest nearly, but like in the evening it doesn't. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I find it easier to run in the afternoon or evening as opposed to the morning. I think a very important thing if you're going to do like a time trial run, like a mile or a 5k, you have to do like intervals beforehand to get yourself well warmed up. Not just your legs, but your breathing, like your breathing has to get warmed up. So uh, a common question is what supplements? Should you take or what supplements I take? I'm pretty pretty simple with it. I really only will take creatine, this is the stuff I take at the minute. And then just some vitamins, these are all actually pretty much the same fucking thing. That's actually a tin of coffee. I don't know what that's doing there. Um, usually just a multivitamin, <clears throat> some sort of fish oil, and um, some vitamin C. And then uh, I'm also a big fan of the hydration tablets as well. 
Um, I think especially in the morning if you've done some training. <coughs> it's good because sometimes uh, it's hard to get water in and just keep pinning water. It's not very pleasant. So I like sometimes taking one of these in the morning. The only thing is you go through them quickly enough and they can be expensive. But um, I like them. Going to make some <coughs> eggs and some Lolo cheese for breakfast. Somebody commented on the last videos. Somebody clearly is a nutritionist and said about eggs having too much cholesterol in them. Fuck that. Live dangerously. Here's a quick tip, quick fact. Don't scramble your eggs in the microwave or in a fucking hob. Just do it in the fry pan. Crack them all in and just keep removing. And then you throw a bit of cheese on top of that now. You got yourself breakfast. So if you're following on Instagram, you'll see that the other day we launched um, the new merch that we had coming out. So these, some of the old ones, but some of the new stuff as well. So we've got a whole box of these to send to the post office. The postwoman is not going to be happy with me because these all have to be processed individually. I'll go and show you some of the new things we got. So we got some hoodies this year, um, or this time around. The black and dark green one. I think they're pretty, pretty slick. So, this maybe isn't the best for you, but here's a dark green one. Um, I'm not really selling it there, but it's pretty cool. And it's actually a really good quality hoodie. You know, sometimes you get them and like you wash them and like you just know they're going to be fucking have like two or three washes and then they're fucked. These ones are actually really good quality. I kind of paid a bit more to get them because of that. And the fit as well is really nice. And then we got just some uh, just standard black ones as well, which are pretty cool. I'll link it somewhere up here, but um, yeah, I gotta go and post them now. So orders all posted there, or at least the first batch anyway. Um, it's crazy, like there's orders going like literally all over Ireland, like Tipperary, Limerick, Galway, Monaghan, like literally everywhere in Ireland, which is fucking crazy. Um, it's funny to think that there's somebody walking around in Tipperary with one of these tops on them. I, um, time in lockdown has consisted of basically two things, um, training, which I've been getting a good bit in, I'm in a good routine, um, but also doing uni work. So in a way, this has kind of been a blessing to disguise because whenever I was working in the gym, I was doing a lot of hours and it was very difficult to find time to put into this master's. Um, and now I have nothing but time. So it's like been a blessing to disguise and that I'm getting ahead of work. And for the first time, I'm actually well ahead of deadlines, which is really good. Um, but it's like, it's good for a wee while. And then you're like, fuck this here, this is shit too. Like, but, um, so yeah, my days are basically consisting of training in the morning, doing some uni work um, for my research project, and then back doing some training in the evening and then chill out. It's a pretty simple schedule, but it's nice to have, um, it's nice to have free time to do these things at the moment. Okay, time for a lower body session. It's a bit of front squat strength. Uh, a bit of fruit before I went to train there, just get some sugars in, but big session. So first uh, thing we're doing in the session, doing a strength with a bit of power, so going front squat paired up with um, a hurdle hop. Still warming up here just. Um, front squats are really nice lift, but it's very tough. I think being able to do a front squat well indicates you've got number one good mobility in the upper body to actually get in the rack position, but it also shows that you've got a decent level of core strength because if not, you're going to flop over like that. Um, definitely a good lift to try and build up to. If you struggle with that, if you struggle with the front rack setup, then you could go into like a zerker setup or else cross the arms. But it's definitely a good one to think about moving on there. Do a few more warm up sets and then we start incorporating the hurdles on it.
after three sets of that, going in the now, some hamstring work, the front squats are obviously more quad dominated. Um, big strength with the RDL. Really nice, the very demanding lower back and hamstrings, a really good one to get strong on. Um, so we're going three sets of eight here, we have uh, 105 on the bar. The key thing is keeping your toes straight and your posture nice and strong. Last thing you want is your back to start rounding because you're going to end up working more of your back and your hamstrings. Really focus on pushing the ass back. Just watching back my footage there for form. I've only done seven reps. My bad. I'll do an extra one in the next set. That's why you don't fucking talk and do weights. It's a bad combo. I would say easily the worst lower body exercise. The worst best. The best worst. The rear foot elevated split squat. If you know, you know. It's a fucking very burning, burning exercise. But one thing we need to make sure we're doing in our lower body sessions is that doing some single leg work. And uh, this is a really good one. If you're wondering, have the fat grips on them for no reason other than we were doing curls with them the other day and they've been on since and I couldn't be bothered and it makes me think that I wish I was doing curls instead of doing fucking split squats split squats are shit good work um, some core work, some pile off presses to sets of 10 I'm trying to resist but I'm going out fine work for Copenhagen's Really good movement to do, really easy to do, not need much equipment. If you haven't done these before, it'll be easier for you to go uh, make the lever shorter, so go down to like your knee, and then each week you just uh, increase the distance. So I'm going from the foot to 125 seconds. Now make sure your body's nice and straight and you're not dipping down like this, so you're really pressing through the foot. Programs from Graham Morris, I think I've mentioned before in the page, just the sessions from him. So he actually has a lot of these wee exercises like bodyweight ones on his YouTube page. Check them out, they see are particularly expensive. Nice for the cat though. Well, one thing one thing doing at the end of every session is pull-ups. Um, have this kind of idea of the challenge of like a thousand pull-ups in one week so that will be next week this week I'm planning to do 750 so we've been like building update each week um, so just after every session just doing a little pull-ups they actually do get easier it's not as hard as what you might think but just a thing now to have it after sessions So done 10 sets of pull-ups to finish. Start at 10, then go 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Think it equates to about 55 pull-ups, just so starting off easy this week with pull-ups and then just uh, gradually build it up as the week goes on. But good wee session there. Some good lower body work done, pretty strong. Go ahead and get fed. So, had some dinner and uh, just out now getting some steps in. One thing I'm trying to do is just hit the 10k steps now that you actually have like time to do it. I'm trying to do it. But we have a really nice walk around here, and I think one of the things I've learned during this lockdown, and probably as you get older, you realize it, but like we're really fortunate 
This is a fucking really beautiful place. Like the view back there, that's the mountains is Donegal and you have the, the foil in the middle. It's actually really beautiful, but it's funny, like you kind of don't always appreciate it whenever you grow up here, but because I've been walking so much around here, you start to really appreciate it, which is a good thing. I think it's important too to get out in nature and get away from houses and the roads and stuff. It's good for the head. But um, that was a simple wee session we went through there tonight and this morning. I was just trying to hammer home the basics at the minute. Um, I think with regards to football, it's seeming like we're going to have football this year, judging by what Fredkar, Fredvar, Fredkar said in late late show. Um, so you're hoping there's maybe going to be something in like maybe late July, maybe August time. I'm trying to be an optimistic person about it and say that it's going to happen, but same point I think nobody really knows but we've got to be positive about it so with that in mind we've got to chat about now you know we kind of have an idea of a date in our mind with the phases and you might have got to kick up the hole to realize that you have to do some work now we're going to chat about voice broker. we're going to chat about what to do to get you in shape for then this is ironic me saying getting in shape and gassed walking up a hill it's not good. Ah, right, okay. So, chatting about your performance. Um, so, let's say we have three or four months now to prepare. Two or three months, maybe. Who the fuck knows, actually. But um, I've chatted about this quite a bit in podcasts and stuff. So, if you go through and maybe listen in, I'll give you some ideas. But this here is my great drawing of the pillars of performance right now for you. Um, so, you have sprints, skill, gym, and running. And that all leads to you having good performance whenever you go back. But um, I think kind of what I want to illustrate with this is that the two kind of most important aspects of this are, are here and here. Because if one of these goes, the whole kind of thing starts to slop down a wee bit. Um, you know, if you're not doing kind of running, if you're not doing running now um, in this period, number one, you're probably not going to be fit when you get back to play. And number two, your risk of injury is going to go up because um, you want to be prepared for running. Your body's not going to be prepared for it. And you can be sure that your management's just going to fucking go mad in the first couple of weeks and try and make up for all the time lost. So that's going to, that's going to be a, a big hit to the body and a big hit to the system. So you want to make sure you're doing some sort of running at the minute um, to make sure that you're, you're building up to that. Stay with the sprints. You know, there's very few things that we can do in the gym to replicate sprints. Um, and if you're not doing it, your body might not be as, as accustomed to it, similar to the running. Again, just your likelihood of injury goes up. But also, um, speed's a hard thing to develop and an easy thing to lose. So if you're not working on it, you know, it's not like you can just go back one week from the game and your speed just comes back. You know, you have to work on and develop it like anything. So if you're not doing these two things now and you're kind of waiting until like a couple of weeks before the before the season, it's probably going to be very tough for you and you're probably going to get a rude really awakening when you start. The gym is one of them things if you have to, you can get away with not doing it, um, you know, provided you're still doing your running. But it is kind of one of them pillars, one of them things you want to try and implement. But if you don't have equipment at the minute or you're not able to get to the gym, then... Um, you can get away with it, provided you're doing your running and sprints. The skill stuff, yes, it's obviously important, but um, we don't really have football training and stuff doing it, so there's sometimes just not much you can do. But basically what I'm trying to get at is there is a lot of things that go into performance um, and a lot of things that we can control, but really the two things you want to make sure you're doing is, is sprinting and running. Um, look, that, that's kind of it for today. Um, I hope you've enjoyed that video. If you could, um, we're very close to hitting 4,000 subscribers, which would be really cool. So if you haven't subscribed, I'd appreciate it if you, ha if you did, if you would. And if you already have subscribed, thank you. I hope you're enjoying it. But um, yeah, I hope everyone is, is keeping safe and looking after themselves and staying positive. And um, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Good luck.